Welcome everyone. Today I want to talk about how you can develop and deploy RESTful services for your Oracle database using Oracle REST Data Services and Oracle SQL Developer. Just a little bit about me. I'm the product manager at Oracle for these products. Uh, you can find me on my blog at thatjeffsmith.com and I'm pretty active on Twitter. I'm also uh, responsible for our data modeling technology and our new command line interface for the database, which is SQL CL. But again, primarily I'm here to talk about Oracle REST data services and how we can publish RESTful services to this mid-tier technology using Oracle SQL Developer. The buzzword, it's ubiquitous. Um, what is it and uh, why should we care? Why, why are you even you know, building this technology and why should you be watching this video? So let's talk about why folks are using REST today pretty much everywhere. And if you look at all the words um, on this slide, really those first three in green that explain everything. Um, REST is just easy. It's very simple to make REST calls from almost any application stack and programming language. You can probably even do uh, RESTful calls um, from COBOL or FORTRAN if you'd like. For the most part, um, people are generally um, thinking of this in terms of like uh, mobile apps and web pages themselves, uh, but there's no reason why your desktop applications can't also make REST calls. And it's just a, um, uh, an interface um, that it's very easy to plug into. And so really what we're talking about um, with Oracle REST Data Services is making the Oracle database itself as a resource available to application developers via REST. So how does Oracle REST Data Services fit into this? So um, for the developer, it's very easy to get started with. You don't need to be um, a Java developer to use it. It has a, a PL SQL API for publishing RESTful services to um, in the database. And we also have the graphical user interface uh, support available with SQL Developer to publish um, to it. To build your RESTful services, uh, you can code those using the same database um, syntaxes and languages that you're already used to doing with Oracle Database, and that would be SQL and PL SQL. We also have an auto REST feature where you can automatically build RESTful endpoints for tables and views, and that's not what I'm really here to talk about today. I really want to talk about this last bullet point where we can write um, RESTful services that uh, execute your custom SQL and uh, PL SQL. So what is ORDS? So it's a Java mid-tier application. Uh, for this presentation, I'm running it in standalone mode, and it has an embedded Jetty web server there. But you can very easily plug it into your, uh, your Tomcat with a um, Apache web server front end onto that. But at the end of the day, what happens is your HTTP and HTTPS uh, requests get sent to ORDS. ORDS is able to take the uh, URI that's delivered to it and break it down and map that to a database resource. And then over a JDBC uh, connection to the database that's mapped, send a translated um, um, call. So basically, what actually runs in the database is SQL and PL SQL, as you would expect. And the result sets come back to ORDS, just like they would come back to what you'd see in SQL Plus or SQL Developer. But instead of passing those back directly down to the calling application, um, we translate those back into um, you know, the ubiquitous JSON um, format. OK, so new in version 4.2 of Oracle SQL Developer, which is our database IDE um, for PL SQL, and it's also our graphical user interface for the database. When you have Oracle REST Data Services configured for the database you're connected to, uh, you can expand the database connection tree, and you'll see a REST Data Services item in the tree. And from there, you'll see any modules that you have uploaded to the database, uh, either via that PL SQL API, um, previous um, apps you've built, uh, or new ones that you're going to push over with SQL Developer. And this is just a screenshot of um, what some of those screens look like. But I'm going to alt tab over into the tool and show this to you live and do a quick demo. This is version 4.2. 
I'm actually running ORDS from inside SQL Developer itself, which you can do. So you can use SQL Developer um, to uh, install and perform upgrades of ORDS in your database. I'm, I'm actually running it here just because it's really easy for quick ad hoc demos. In my database, I have a REST enabled schema, which just means the schema is available um, to REST enable objects and to also publish RESTful services too. So HR has been aliased uh, to this uh, peeps. And I've mentioned the PL SQL API a couple times. Um, here's what that PL SQL API looks like for REST enabling something. So we're already good to go to um, publish REST services to this schema. And I have already have some modules um, that I've already put into here. I have one called Tweets. We'll just take a look at this one very quickly. So I have a SQL statement that's going to take a, a text value that's passed in the request itself and it's going to run this uh, statement against this table and if we go look at the table it's just um, I've downloaded uh, all the tweets I've ever tweeted and this is just a way for me to search those so I don't need to do any uh, manual specification of parameters here I can see that the uh, source type is going to be um, collection query. I want the data format to be JSON. Uh, the pagination size is set to zero. Let's change that to 25. Because I don't want them all to come back in one big dump. And this is how we're going to refer to it. So let's go over into my browser. So it's slash words slash the alias uh, schema. And then we have the module. And then uh, here is the uh, service. And then on the end is the parameter that I'm passing in. So this is going to search all of my tweets for that text. Let's search for uh, SQL dev. Oh, that didn't work. I think that needs escaped. So let's just search for that instead. No hits. Let's look for this text. There we go. So these are all of the tweets that have that text in it. Or at least it's the first page of results, which would be 25. And we have links here to go get the next 25, of which there are many, many more. So this made that look really easy. But um, let's say this uh, database is up in my cloud service and I need to change my RESTful service on the fly. You know, I don't have to upload any XML files. I don't have to compile anything. All I need to do is update this right here. So instead of this, let's make it a little bit um, more interesting. Not like... And we'll change the pagination size to 50, just to show you the the changes. So that change is made live. And we'll say, uh, let's search anything uh, that's not like beer. So don't see that text here. Don't see it here. And we can see the page size is 50. Let me just show you the um, mechanics of building these. We'll do one from scratch. 
So I want to create a new module. We'll call it uh, videos. So you can see as we build this out, SQL Developer is showing us what that URI is going to look like. So publish, this means make this thing available to the world. Oftentimes I'll forget to check box that and I'll wonder why I'm getting 404 since because I haven't turned it on. And so in this module, uh, I want to have something called, um, oh, what do we want to call it? Do the world famous hello world. Except that's not a very good, um, that's not a very good um, name for it. So let's call it message. So here's my video module. I need to add a handler. This is going to be a git. So here we have my fully functional SQL worksheet. So anything I can do in a normal SQL developer worksheet, run queries, test them, get help with the syntax, that's all available here too. So I can test this. Save it. So that's videos message. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. So we have this bind on text. We can also see that that's referenced here. So I need to do the same here because I want to pass that up. Save that again. And there it is back. So that's just to get, but you can obviously come in here and add handlers and do any type of work that you want. Let's see if I've got one that we can show very quickly. Yeah. So here's one of a post. Let's look at this one. So I can declare uh, parameters that are going to be a part of the response. And I can also say, look, I need to get this off the HTTP header. Or put this on the HTTP header. And this is going to send back a response code of 201. And I'm also having an output of a total and the new record, which are part of the response here. And I'm calling a, a PL SQL block. So really, anything you can execute in a PL SQL block or um, a SQL statement can be part of your RESTful service. So if you start building these and you need to share them with others, uh, the other thing you might want to be able to do um, is you can right click in here and say export and we'll build the SQL plus script or SQL CL script that you can run to go put this in another database that has ORDs configured. So like I said, we have a full PL SQL API. So if you need to automate things in your build scripts, very, very easy to do. And if you're in the command line and you want to get this, that's all here too. So we have in SQL CL um, a REST feature or a REST command. So I 
thing in the list of modules. We're in the wrong schema, so connect. So we just created the videos one. So rest export videos. And you could just pull that to a SQL file and then run that. If you'd like to learn more about REST enabling your database, very easy. Just go to oracle.com slash REST. We have an Oracle REST Twitter account. Uh, two of our developers are on there, and you can find me on Twitter as well at that Jeff Smith. Subscribe to this channel. I'll be doing more um, REST-based videos for Oracle REST data services, and of course, check out all of our blogs. Thanks again.